week at Chelsea and a momentous occasion it is with this, the, the morning after the night before, Chelsea have finally, finally won. And with this being more upbeat, a happier vibe, I look at me, I'm smiling. I'm, I'm actually smiling for a change. We're edging ever closer, though, to the 5,000 subscriber mark before the end of the season. And so if you aren't already, please do hit the, uh, the subscribe button and also hit the like button whilst you're there. Pochettino, uh, the topic of conversation still. Is he coming? Is he not? News has gone a little bit quiet. Radio silence, uh, so to speak, as of late, with ongoing poor results. But now, with the club safe from relegation or possible relegation, not that it was ever going to happen, but yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, surely now we can expect to see some progress with regards to the vacant managerial position, possibly even confirmation of Pochettino to Chelsea. It is alleged that the conversations between Pochettino and the club are ongoing still, and that nothing has collapsed. Details of a contract are still being negotiated, mainly regarding the length of the position. Will he actually come? That's the question to you, the viewer. Will he actually come? I personally think it's likely a matter of time at this point. Um, again, now that we've got, uh, you know, I was going to say promotion secured, but now that we've got, um, you know, next season up and ready, so to speak, like the foundation can now be laid for the new season. All that needs to be, you know, implemented now is the new manager. So do you see it being likely? I see it being happening in, in, in the next few days, maybe even before the Nottingham Forest game. Next up, the goalkeeper situation, which again, continues to loom. Are, are people going? Are people coming in? Uh, it's all over the place. Edouard Mendy up first and the Senegalese goalkeeper whose contract situation has been up in the air for quite some time now with the goalkeeper expecting maybe to a lot of people a lot more than he he deserves one really really exceptional season um and then if I'm not mistaken really good up until the African Cup of Nations um and then it was all downward from there up until now he is expected to be sold at the end of the season. With that said, with Andre Onana, again, the likely replacement. We spoke about him in the last episode, but it's seeming as though, uh, or sorry, seems as though he will be the most likely replacement coming in the opposite direction. Not only that, but bids of Kepa or for Kepa Arizabalaga are also alleged to be open for consideration. Whilst Kepa has shown glimpse and I praised him uh, maybe a little bit too much at times and then, you know, being a bit harsh like yesterday. I mean, uh, we'll, we won't go into that again, but I think he could have done better. It was a brilliant shot nonetheless, brilliant goal. Uh, but still, whilst Kepa has shown glimpses of improvement over the last season, there are still a lot of room or, or still is a lot of room for improvement. And quite frankly, with the time he's had at the club, he's been here f pff, a, quite a few years now. It's probably the right time um, and, and the right point in this, um, you know, tenure at the club that we call it a day uh, with him and look for worthy replacements. You know, he's been on the bench. He's been our, 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 our second goalkeeper at times. I don't think he'll want to do that. I don't think we want him to be our replacement um, in terms of, uh, you know, second goalkeeper. Again, Mendy certainly doesn't want to be that anymore. So he's, he's going to be gone. Uh, Kepa, as I said, won't want to become second goalkeeper again. So it's more likely that we're going to lose both of them in the summer. What do you think? What do you think? Would you be OK with both of those leaving? Or would you rather one stay or, or both stay? I highly doubt it. But let me know in the comments. Incomings and, uh, you know, all that there is in terms of an update is that Chelsea are looking for two or three signings with the, the number of departures still looking to be, uh, you know, aimed at around eight to ten, which I think will be hard with players not willing to budge out of their current contracts and maybe even teams not really wanting the players that are available. The addition of two to three on top of that makes the, uh, the, the shrinking of the club around six to seven. If you, you know, you've got your eight to ten going in and then your two to three coming, uh, you know, 
sorry, eight to ten going out and then two to three coming in. It's a, it's a numbers game. It really is. And maths, it ain't my strong suit. <laughs> but still, that would be around six to seven players. Not only that, um, but of course... There, there, we have got the inclusion of Malagusto and Kunku, Andre Santos, and, and who else knows? Uh, you know, who else? Who knows? There might be more people coming in, as we said. But Andre Onana is, of course, the main name. But again, don't forget Nkunku, uh, Malagusto, and uh, Andre Santos coming in. P pretty much null and voiding the uh, the eight to ten mark. The the other two signings, whilst no names have been given, there are rumors to players at this point. Um but uh, a haircut is coming soon, by the way. I'm getting it tomorrow or, or on Tuesday. But still, um, <laughs> the other two signings, whilst no names are given, are expected to be a striker and possibly a midfielder. So with that, who would your uh, striker and or midfielder option B to bring in in the summer. There are plenty of names. Kane, you know, a few other people here and there. Declan Rice, is it likely? Probably not, but still, let me know in the comments down below. And finally, not, not so much news, but I mean, it is the most uh, recent news. On a positive note, I know we discussed it last night, but how do you feel waking up? <laughs> After a win yesterday, it's a it's a strange feeling for me, um, one that I haven't felt in quite some time. I'm at ease. I really am at ease now. Of course, with the the, the guarantee that we are in the Premier League next season, not that it was necessarily any much more than a, a bit of a fright, a bit of a scare. Um, I'm energized this morning, and whilst I'm not deluded uh, in thinking that we can win. Uh, any more than one of our last four games. A back-to-back -back run of wins if we beat Nottingham Forest next Saturday will set up for a, a nicer end to the season for, for what has been, you know, nothing short of a nightmare, quite frankly. You know, if we can go back-to-back -back wins, who knows? Who knows? Um, the City game again, I'm not so sure that we want to win that one, but... <laughs> It is what it is. For our first win against Man City to be one that helps Arsenal, you know, first win against Man City since we won the uh, the Champions League, rather, uh, for it to be that of a win that gives Arsenal a little bit more of a chance. Um, they're probably not going to win the league, but I don't really want to help them in any way, shape or form. With that said, that's episode three of this week at Chelsea in the books. If you're feeling... Oh, sorry, I hope you are feeling as good as I am today. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified of any future content on the channel. My name is Harry up the Chelsea, and peace.